Welcome to High Impact Living, the motivational speaking of Rick McDaniel, the noted author, international communicator, and senior pastor at Richmond Community Church in Richmond, Virginia. Michael Hyatt uh, tells a story about when he and his wife took a anniversary trip to Hawaii. They went to Maui, and they, while they were there at this resort, there was a snorkeling class, and so they took the snorkeling class, and they, they really loved it and enjoyed it, and so they decided the next day that they would try snorkeling on their own. And so they headed out into the uh, ocean there next to the hotel, and they just got completely enamored in snorkeling, you know, just, just looking at all of the coral and all the different fish and the ocean bottom and the whole nine yards, and it just mesmerized them, and they were just loving what they were doing. And then uh, at some point, Michael popped his head out of the water and was shocked to realize that they had drifted a long ways from shore, that they had gotten caught up in a riptide unknown to them, and they were, get this, over a mile away from shore that their hotel was just this little dot far in the distance. And so he, he got his wife's attention, and then when she looked up and saw, you know, the panic was on both of their faces as they thought, oh my gosh, we have drifted out into the middle of the ocean. Fortunately, they had brought along one of those little boogie boards to like put some different things they might have collected while they were snorkeling. And so they each grabbed a hold of the boogie board, and they began to paddle their way back into shore. It took them over an hour to finally get back to shore. When they could finally <clears throat> stop paddling and stand up, they, they slowly made their way to shore, and they just dropped in the sand completely exhausted by the ordeal that they had just experienced. Now, that is a uh, powerful, real-life picture of what drifting can be like in the sense of drifting in the ocean. But last week we started this series, Drift, to talk about what it's like to be drifting in our lives. And today we're going to talk about how to avoid drift. So take out of your information, guys, if you would, this purple note sheet and welcome those of you here at at the Glen Allen campus, as well as those of you that are joining us on the internet campus or on the High Impact Living broadcast. Let's read out of the Bible. It's the book of Philippians, chapter 3, begins with verse 14. I run toward the goal so that I can win the prize of being called to heaven. This is the prize that God offers because of what Christ Jesus has done. All of us who are mature should think in this same way. And if any of you think differently, God will make it clear to you. But we must keep going in the direction that we are now headed. It's possible for any person to uh, metaphorically pop their head up out of the water and find out that they drifted far from where they're supposed to be. My guess is that everyone I'm speaking to who's listening or watching is drifting in some aspect of your life. Maybe not, but chances are pretty good, at least in some aspect of your life. And my real concern is that some are drifting in more than one, if not many different aspects of your life. Drift happens. It happens like this. Health is failing. The marriage is broken. The career is stalled. Closeness to God is a distant memory. That's how drift happens. And this series is about stopping that right now and turning and going in a new and better direction. Listen to what the the Apostle Paul says to us. He says, all of us who are mature should think in this same way. Now, you might want to just circle mature or underline it or highlight it on your tablet or phone. Mature, because it's an important word. All of us who are mature should what? Should think in the same way. Think in what same way? All right, context. Go back to what was just previously said. I run toward the goal. I run toward the goal. What comes after in the same context? What's the last sentence? 
We must keep going in the direction we are now headed. Mature people don't drift. Mature people run toward the goal. Mature people keep going in the direction of the goal. They keep going in the direction that they're headed. That's what we need for our lives. Drift has never helped or blessed a person's life ever. It has, however, damaged and hurt people's lives in a multitude of different ways. The whole idea behind this drift series is that you are going to put a halt to drift in your life wherever it's happening. It's going to stop. Stop right now. That you're going to avoid drifting. You're going to avoid drifting now. You're going to avoid drifting in the future. So how do you do that? How do you avoid drift? How do you stop it and, and get moving in the right direction? Well, the first thing you have to do is identify your current location. You've got to identify where you're located right now. You have to be honest with yourself and say to yourself, this is where I am. Today is the wake-up call. Where are you right now? Where are you in relation to where you should be? Here's where you are. Here's where you should be. What happened? Drift. Slowly. 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 You drifted. You drifted away. And you've got to take responsibility for your own life today. You have to take responsibility for your direction. Keep going in the direction. Keep going in the right direction. Drifting is when we're going in the wrong direction. We have to be able to honestly say, where I, where I am right now. Where are you right now? Because you can't go somewhere else until you acknowledge first where you are. Where have you allowed your focus to wander? Where have you drifted off course? I can't answer that for you. All I can do is present the questions and present the categories, if you would, and you have to decide for yourself. You have to be brutally honest and say, yes, it's true, I have drifted. So let's just look at some categories today. How about we begin with uh, your family, your family life. Have you drifted? Have you drifted? If you're a parent, have you drifted in your parental role, in your parental commitment? Are you allowing things to happen in your family that you used to not allow to happen? Have, you, uh, have the kids sort of worn you down? Things that you used to say, nope, 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 no, we're not doing that. Uh, yes, um, church, yeah, we are going. And now all of a sudden, no, the kids don't go to church with us anymore. You've drifted. You've drifted. No, you, you can't go and do that. You're, 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 you're not 17. You, you can't go to R-rated movies. And now they're going. The danger, of course, whenever I do things like this, is that some of you say, okay, well, I'm not doing those two things, so I'm good. Or why does Pastor Rick have to pick on R-rated movies and go into church as if those are the only two things? There's a thousand things to being a good parent. And by the way, you know what those are. And you know what they are for you. I mean, you may, you're, you, you have to decide for yourself, this is our family life, this is the way we do things. How about your marriage? Have you drifted? Used to go on date nights, haven't been on date night in so long, you can't even remember the last time there was a date night. Used to go on trips away, just the two of you, to reconnect, have some romance. Hopefully you can fill in the rest of that for yourself. Haven't done that in forever. Well... Oh, well, this is expensive, Pastor Rick. Oh, the kids are busy and doing things, and we couldn't find a babysitter. And ah. By the way, did a great series several years ago called Diagnosis Excusiosis. You might want to look that one up. Diagnosis Excusiosis. 
There will always be excuses for drifting. How about your career? Still putting forth the best effort? Or just sort of showing up, going through the motions, not really working hard, not trying to improve the company, the office, the department, the team, just sort of going through the motions, drifted, drifted. How about your finances? Are they where they're supposed to be? Used to be on top of debt, used to be a faithful tither. Now, debt's gone up, giving's gone down, drifted. Drifted. Drifted away. How about your health? Started out this year. This year is going to be the year. Getting in shape. I'm going to start eating right. Discovered what kale and quinoa are. I know what they are now. I I had quinoa pancakes yesterday. I'm not going to tell you that was great. I'm not going to lie to you and tell you that that was great. But if you put enough fruit in around it, it, it can work. Hey, chocolate chip banana pancakes, <laughs> kiwa pancakes. It's not a hard choice, you know, uh, but uh, you've got to decide for yourself. It's incredible, isn't it? Every year what happens with the gym. I've been working out at gyms for a long, long time, so I've seen a lot of people come and go. A lot of cars in the parking lot, and then they dwindle, and then they dwindle, and then they dwindle. What happened? Drifted. Drifted. All the excuses. How about your relationship with God? How about your spiritual health? Not just your physical health, your spiritual health. I wrote something this past week. I hope all of you read it. Ten signs. Ten signs. Ten warning signs for your spiritual life, for your spiritual health. Ten warning signs. If you want to just examine your spiritual health, just look at those ten. Look at ten spiritual warning signs. There's warning signs for your physical health. There's warning signs for your spiritual health. Have you drifted and drifted? Well, I used to get up and used to have my devotional with God and spend my time with him in prayer read the Bible, read the Indie devotional before I headed off to work, but then, you know, I started sleeping in later, or then, da-da-da-da-da-da, whatever the case may be. There'll always be things that can come into your life. And the beauty of this series, in my opinion, my very subjective opinion, the beauty of this series is that this is exactly what you need, the wake-up call. Some of you need this so bad because you've drifted and no one has called you account to account for that drifting and then your loving pastor comes along it's my job to protect your spiritual health and your physical and emotional well-being and say to you identify your current location only you can do it friends only you can say this is where i'm really at right now you have to start there then determine your future destination. You have to determine, where do I want to end up? What is the destination I do want to have? Do you want to feel close to God and feel like God is directing your life, feel like you are, as the Bible said, says, being led by the Spirit, walking in the Spirit, have a sensitivity to what God is doing get goosebumps on a regular basis because you can see how God is at work? Do you want that? Do you want to be able to read the Bible in such a way that you feel like the, the words to the Bible are just jumping off the page at you? Come, you want to come to a, a worship service and, and, and because you're so spiritually in tune from the moment the service starts, you are just locked in in praise and worship to God. There's no boredom. There's no distraction. You're on it. You're in it. Is that what you want for a future destination? Is that what you want for your life? I hope so. I hope so. 
And the same thing goes for all these other aspects of your life. Do you want to keep struggling with mounting debt, robbing God, not giving to God, paying interest to to the bank and to the credit card company instead of not paying that and investing it in God's kingdom? Is, Is that the way you want to go from here forward? Or do you want to turn things around and you want to quit the drift and get where you want to get to? How about your physical health? How much longer are we going to talk about losing the 30 pounds? How much longer are we going to talk about actually physically doing something? It seems like every week there's a new report. The new report that came out, right, is now saying that the blood pressure readings, this sort of hypertension thing, we're not even going to acknowledge that anymore. There's no more, uh, the, the, the initial part of high blood pressure, we're just going either your blood pressure's right or it's high. There's no in between anymore. There's no like, well, there's this little, nope, it's gone. Either you are or you're not. And the report said what? Most people, the vast majority of people, will not need any sort of medication. They'll simply need to adjust their diet and increase their exercise. How much longer before we finally say, yeah, that's where I want to be, and I'm not going to keep talking about it. I'm actually going to get there. And whatever else it is that we're talking about, your marriage, how many people are just continuing to sort of go through the motions. The marriage is more like a partnership, like a business arrangement. You do this, I do that. You handle this, I handle that. We're together. But it's not what God wants a marriage to be, which is something that involves love and intimacy, friendship, certainly, fun, excitement. Well, I better move on. It's getting pretty serious in here. The essence of life planning is envisioning a better life for yourself and a better future. That's, that's what it's all about, and that's what this means. If you don't know where you're going, then you'll never get there, or you'll end up somewhere you never wanted to be. If you don't have a plan... It seems like, to me, maybe I'm wrong, but it seems like, and I think it's because of the aging of baby boomers and every single day, here's a little fun fact, every single day, 10,000 more people go into retirement. Every single day, 10,000 more people. So it seems like there's a lot of talk about financial planning and retirement in terms of commercials and advertisements. And I'm all for it, man. I mean, I think that is great. But there's a lot more to life than just financial planning. There's a lot of other planning that needs to happen. How do you do that? Well, in the most basic sense, you have to know three things. First of all, you have to know your God. Second of all, you have to know yourself. And third of all, you have to know your era. You have to know the time in which you live. You have to understand the dynamics that are happening in the world in which you live. You have to understand yourself, the way you're wired up, the way God made you, and you've got to understand God. You can never get to the right plan for your life without those three factors working together in concert, together now, not just separate. They must work together like three concentric circles that blend in together. And your knowledge of God and his plan for your life and his work in your life and your knowledge of yourself and your personality and the way you're wired up and what you're passionate about and your knowledge of the world in which you live, which is, which is change. It's a changing world. It's a, my son and I had this fascinating discussion yesterday about uh, some of the studies that have come out and people are writing books about how social media has just almost permanently changed the way we interact with one another the way we understand the nature of communication in life. I mean, that's it. That's the way it is. Some of you are old enough to remember when there was no internet. Don't raise your hands. When there was no internet. It's not that long ago. I know some of you young adults are like, what, what, no internet? What kind of savages were you, you barbarians? But yes, there used to be a time when that did not exist. Yeah, no joke. 
But we live in a world that has changed, and we have to understand this world as well as ourselves and God. When you, when you are able to, to get to that point where you say, okay, I know God's plan for my life. I understand what God wants me to do. I understand the talents and abilities he's given me, the gifts. I understand the opportunities. I understand myself, what, what I'm all about, how I'm, how I'm wired up, what I'm really passionate about. I understand this world in which I live. I understand where I am in this world. I understand what I have at my disposal. I understand all that stuff. Then you can begin to say, okay, what am I going to do? What are your priorities? Knowing that, what are your priorities? What's most important to you? Again, that you have to do that. You, you have to decide what are the things that are most important. And I think you have to do that in the various areas of your life, the ones, for instance, that I've talked about today, your health, your spiritual, physical, spiritual health, your physical health, spiritual health, your family, your finances, your career. What about all these different areas of your life? What are the priorities? Where do you want to be? Where, what is it that you dream your life would look like? Only by knowing that and making those priorities clear can you begin to concentrate on those. And it's through the concentration that you don't end up drifting. Maybe you say, well, Pastor Rick, it's overwhelming to me to think about it in all of those ways. Well, then just pick one. Just pick one. Just pick one area. I, of course, would be very, very partial to the spiritual. But maybe it's your career. Maybe it's your health. But pick one. If you can't, I still think you have to identify in all, but if you want to start working on just one, start working on just one. Or maybe it's the area of greatest drift in your life. You can say, well, I've drifted a little here and a little more here, but man, I've really drifted. I mean, I'm way over here and I used to be way over there. Well, then, then maybe that's the one to start with. How are, you, how are you going to get to that future destination? What is that destination? You'll never get there if you don't identify it and clearly articulate, okay, that's the destination. Now, start your new direction. Today, today is the start day. Today, you start your new direction. Today, drifting ends. It ends. No more drifting. The drifting is over. And the new direction has begun. Don't put it off. Well, um, after the holidays, I'll start, Pastor Rick. No, start now. How many times have we put it off and put it off and put it off and we're still putting it off? Still, it's never started because, well, it's not the right time and, you know, I'm going to be doing this and then this is going to happen. This is life. This is life. There will always, always be stuff happening. Always. So if you wait till the schedule is clear and there's no more commitments, then that never happens. At some point, you just have to say, I've got to start. And I'm saying, start today. Start today. Now, what's it going to look like? It's going to look like a lot of work. And uh, I can't sugarcoat it for you. I just, I just refuse to do that, to try to sort of sell people on some phony baloney idea. No way, I'm not going to do it. I'm just going to be straight honest with you and say, it takes work. It takes effort. The hard work receives the blessings. What hardworking people receive, lazy people forfeit. It's just that simple. And let me tell you something. Laziness and drifting go hand in hand. Just sort of be lazy enough and you'll just drift right out to sea. You won't even know it. And then one day you'll pop your head up out of the water and you'll go, holy smokes, how did I ever end up here? It will always take work. It will always take effort. It will always take self-discipline. Write it down. Self-discipline. You have to discipline yourself. If you're ever going to reach the destination, it will be because you will discipline yourself. 
you will force yourself to do things that you need to do, even if you don't particularly want to do it. Yesterday, after my delicious quinoa pancakes, I came home after having breakfast with my wife, and that, that next thing for me to do on a Saturday morning is go work out. That's the next step. And I found myself just being like, eh, I don't really want to work out today. And that happens. That happens t- to all of us. Someone who's been doing it for years like me, somebody who's not been doing it for so long, and everybody in between. You just don't feel it, you know? You don't feel it. And you could say, well, Pastor, what, I can't take a break? You can't take a mental health day? You know, you can do it. The problem is if you keep doing it. And just as I was sitting there thinking, ah, maybe I'll take a day off today, this message sort of popped into my mind probably going to be kind of hard to stand up there tomorrow, Rick, and tell people how they need to work and do it and be self-disciplined, and then you don't want to be self-disciplined today, so just get up and uh, get to cracking and go do what you have to do. So that's what I did, and that's the nature of self-discipline, just doing what you have to do. You wake up in the morning, especially as it gets colder out and the bed is so warm and snuggly and snuggly. I don't know if it's snuggly, but uh, where that word came from. But anyway, it's warm. (laughs) And you think to yourself, "Ah, I'll I'll just hit the snooze bar and I'll just snooze a little bit longer. Of course, if you snooze a little bit longer... In order to get yourself ready and get to work on time, you'll have to cut something out out of your morning, and I wonder what that might be. Will you not take a shower? Probably not. Pass on combing your hair? Hopefully not. Brush your teeth? Don't do that. Eat? Yeah, you're probably going to do that. What gets the short end of the stick? Anyone want to guess? Time with God. Just gets the short end. It takes self-discipline to say, you know what? I'm going to get up out of this warm, snuggly bed, and I'm going to get over to where I do my devotions, and I'm going to get out my Bible, and I'm going to get my indie devotional or whatever you use, and I'm going to spend time with Jesus before I start my day. It's just self-discipline. Now, Surrounding yourself with the right kind of friends, the right kind of mentors, the right kind of coaches can help a lot because they can bring into your life perspective, they can bring into your life encouragement and accountability. I mean, there's nothing like talking to a friend on the way to work and saying, hey, what did God say to you this morning in your devotions? Uh, well, um, hey, how about, how about that Dancing with the Stars show last night? That was really something when so-and-so got knocked off for, I don't know any of these things, so I can't speak to it (laughs) about it, but uh, whatever. Hey, what about when the zombies were walking and then they, yeah, I don't know about that stuff either, but I do know about Jesus. What happens? That's how friendship works. And good friends don't go, oh, I can't believe that you slept in this morning and didn't do your devotions. But somebody who's a good friend might say, hey, you know, you got to just, you got to do it because, you know, it's just, it's just self-discipline. It's just something that you have to do. And some really wise person said that one time, and you should follow that. Self-discipline with the right people around you. Without it, what happens? Drift. When you follow closely to Jesus, there is no way you could possibly ever drift. But when you start not following Jesus so closely, it's just like going in opposite directions. Repeated times of spiritual renewal will keep drift from happening in your life. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. But without those repeated times of spiritual renewal, 
which happen again in all the kinds of dynamics that you have at a church where you're in Sunday services, where you're in some sort of small group, where you're doing something in service. And all these times that you have give you opportunities to be renewed spiritually. Without them, drift. Good news is this, friends. You can never drift too far away that you can't get back on course. You can never drift too far away that you can't get back on course. If there's one message that just is throughout the scripture and it's the message of Jesus and the message of grace, it's that God is always about second chances and comebacks. That he's always saying you can come back. There's always the opportunity for another chance. There's always the opportunity to start anew. So if you drifted, don't be paralyzed by that. Don't be downtrodden and discouraged by that and say, oh, I'm so far away. Be like Michael Hyatt and his wife who said, oh my gosh, we're like a mile away from shore, but we better start paddling. We better start paddling, and eventually they made it back. And if you'll start today, eventually you'll make it back to where you're supposed to be. Pastor Rick will return in just a moment with some closing words of encouragement. Before he does, I wanted to remind you about our webpage, www.highimpactliving.com. It's your resource for a high-impact life. Let's pray together. Lord, I just pray that you will just help each and every person listening today who would desire to stop the drift and start today to head in the right direction to the destination that you have for their lives. I pray, God, that you would strengthen them, that you would assist them, that you would guide them and direct them as they move back in the direction that you have for their lives. Help all of us to be honest enough with ourselves to see where we drifted so we can get back on course and move in the direction you have for our lives. We pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for watching High Impact Living. If you'd like to continue to support the vision and mission of this ministry, just click the donate button or visit us online at highimpactchurch.tv. When you give generously to High Impact Living, you're helping to spread the message of Jesus to tens of thousands of people worldwide. Don't forget to like us on Facebook, and we'll see you next time on High Impact Living.